Welcome to the Lubbock or Leave It podcast, a recruiting podcast on Red Raider Sports. I'm Matt Clare. He's been going every week. We are brought to you by our title sponsor, Carnley Properties. Uh, if you are in any uh, real estate needs in the greater Austin metro area, please give Clayton Carnley and his team a call. Um, they're Red Raiders. Um, they've been in the business for years, and it doesn't matter what kind of real estate. If you guys have questions, we're going to put their information here below the player, uh, and we'd encourage you to reach out to Clayton and his team. They're not only good Red Raiders, but they're also a member of the Red Raider sports community. So definitely give them a shout. Ben, uh, I mean, I know you're on vacation last week, um, getting, you know, married in Mexico, sitting on the beach, drinking pina coladas. I mean, I'm sorry, man, there's nothing to really talk about. Nothing happened while you were gone, man. So, um, not much of an agenda today. What do you want to talk about? Yeah. I mean, the, the vacation was great, you know, and now I need a vacation for my vacation, but I mean, a yeah, close football game, I, I guess not, not, not much happened. Um, so, I mean, we'll, we'll just, yeah. you know, get into it. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, we're clearly we're joking. I mean, we don't, but, but not joking about not having much of an agenda. I mean, we thought we'd just press record and kind of see where the conversation takes us. And, and Ben, um, you know, you mentioned the close game. You mentioned everybody by now is very, very familiar with what happened Saturday. Um, but, you know, the college football world more than really any other has changed so much, right? You've got the early signing period that was introduced, what, you know, call it three years ago. Now you have uh, NLI. Now you have open transfers. I mean, this is almost something you have to look at completely differently. And I think the reason I mentioned that is I think the timing of this had everything to do with the early signing period because 80 to 90% of the talent is going to sign with whatever college it is come December, the week of December 15th. And there's, you know, very sorry, dogs barking at the air, I'm sure. Um, but there's very few talent after that, you know, you start to get into more of that transfer portal type of deal. And, and I think that the administration probably wanted to give, uh, you know, the search committee, which we'll get into, you know, more time to truly vet out and, and get this one right, because it's been uh, 11, 12 years and it, and it hasn't gone in the in the Red Raiders direction, but Ben, you know, those were my initial thoughts. What are your, some of your initial thoughts as you got back into town and, and your phone's probably blowing up a little bit from uh, all the news. Yeah. I mean, I agree with you. Tech had to get out in front. Um, this was the inevitable decision, you know, I, unless, you know, somehow Wells would have finished like nine and three or something, but that wasn't going to happen. So you pull the, you know, you pull the cord now and you, you get it done, but, um, I'm just looking around. There's three other current Power Five openings: LSU, USC, Washington State, and now Texas Tech is the fourth. But I mean, yeah, it just you know, tying it back into recruiting and the early signing period, I think that was a part of major frustration for fans. Is not so much the the commits that they brought in, maybe to the amount, and now you have a month and a half till signing day, and we sit here with nine high school you know commitments. Um, and you know, I'm sure that number is going to go down now with the coaching change that that's just going to happen. And so, you know, we'll see, we'll see who they bring. I think, uh, you know, kind of the leader we'll get into that later, but, you know, Jeff trailer, um, you know, East Texas, highly respected by a lot of high school coaches that you spoke to. I think, you know, he's shown an ability to bring in the type of high school talent and numbers that is required. So I think, you know, if it does end up being him, and again, this is way too early, we're not reporting anything, um, you know, I would expect that to continue. And, you know, that, that's what fans want to see, too. They like to see the high recruiting rankings and all that comes with that. So, you know, that's just my quick, you know, opinion on maybe why now as, as opposed to waiting. Yeah. And, I, and like you said, we can get into candidates and things like that. But, you know, the reality is Texas Tech has a head coaching vacancy it's going to be the fourth time they're hiring a coach in the past 11 and 12 years. Um, everything's kind of steadily gone downhill uh, since the 2008, 2009 season. And, you know, I thought Max Olson, Olson had a pretty good article um, that was fair, you know, and, and I think at Red Raider sports, right. It's all tech fans. You can get into sort of a, not a group think, right. But, you know, everybody's kind of rooting for tech, if you will. Um, but from an outside looking in, I mean, the, the numbers, the performance, you know, you can, you can talk about what you want to be, but uh, again, 
you know, I think there's a, a part of the crowd that's excited to see a change. Uh, but from Hokut's mouth, you know, he did mention, you know, not recruiting, you know, specific, but relationships in the state of Texas. And I mean, I feel like we heard that last time, Ben. I, I, I'm not going to go back and quote. It's a, it's a, it's a press conference bingo spot. If, if you want my honest opinion, uh, I think they need to come through with that, right? That's why I. Um, that's what gave me the idea. It's like, okay, well, if you say you want somebody with Texas ties, and these are the guys that are, you know, mentioned. Let's let's truly see who has ties, you know, with Texas high school coaches. And I think that that is great when it starts at the head coach down. Um, but I think Level also made a tremendous point on one of their recent podcasts is that look at Matt Rule, right? I mean, he just had a plan and he knew that a portion of that or a variable that would help him ac accomplish that is hiring these five uh, Texas high school football coaches, one which ended up being Joey McGuire, right? So I think that there are a couple of different directions they can take. Um, and what I, what I want to talk about before we get into candidates is, is one thing, you know, when, when I paint that picture of hiring for the fourth time in, in 12 years, you know, it, it hasn't gone well. Right. So, you know, for, for whatever reason or whatever changes throughout college football, you haven't gotten the right leader for the football team. Um, and, and those are, that conversation can go a ton of different ways, but all of that to say this hire is more than more important than ever. Um, whatever the big 12 ends up being with these new teams over the next two to three years, you know, being in that competitive landscape, I remember arguing, uh, or, you know, kind of bantering back and forth with people on the site that were, you know, kind of dogging on Cincinnati. I said, Hey, when's the last time you woke up and your team was talked about in the top five, right? Very long time. So you shouldn't be dissing Cincinnati. Right. And so it's about having the right coach. It's about building the right program and, and doing things your way. And I thought, um, you know, I thought, you know, Max and, and maybe Max's article, something else have been consuming so much media since Monday. Um, but, you know, they all agreed that you had to have, you know, a little bit of an edge. You got to find, you know, your your niche in West Texas as a head coach. And I think Mike Leach did that at the time with offense and sort of being a maverick, if you will. And, and if, I don't even know if that's the right uh, word for it. Um, but I think, you know, I think there's so many options out there and I think either which way, whether you, you know, I think Jeff trailer, Jeff trailer, Sonny Dykes, clearly, you know, as we're 10, 20 minutes into the podcast, those are the two top names, Jeff trailer, UTSA, right. Longtime Texas high, uh, Texas high school football coach, Sonny Dykes. Most people that bother listening to this podcast have to know who Sonny Dykes is, uh, but catching some, some lighting in a bottle at SMU right now. Um, I think he's benefiting from a tremendous staff. And, and I think that they're, they're just really taking advantage of being a, a program that transfers kids that want to be closer to home. I mean, they're crushing it in, in terms of recruiting and what that program can be. The reality of it is Texas Tech is further along from conference standing, um, you know, facilities, you know, ceiling, et cetera. Um, and, and that can also be debated, but, you know, you look at it, right. And, and Texas tech has to be a step up from either of those two jobs. But Ben, I mean, very rarely when you immediately, we're talking, what is it? Week, I don't know, six, seven, right. We're immediately talking about, you know, the, these two guys, well, these two guys are undefeated. They still have crucial games left. They still have bowl games to go. The reality is like, regardless of if, if, you know, Ben Golan broke the story, right. Or beat Bruce Feldman to the punch. You're not going to hear anything until after Thanksgiving, you know, and maybe even a week after that. So I'm, I know that was like a huge word vomit, but all that to say, like, to me, the gut feeling is, is it's so way too early to get, you know, to get too up or too down about any of this. And personally, when I go back to, you know, trailer, yes. You know, if you say he wants to come here, um, I'm open to hearing what that staff would look like. I like the plan. Sure. Right. I'm good with that. If you tell me that we're going to go find our own guy, um, but we're going to do the Texas high school football coach or the pay the coordinators, what one to 1.5 million, depending on the candidate, yeah, absolutely. Right. Cause that's not never been done around here before Ben. And so, you know, the last thing I'll say about trailer is the guy was named the, the big 12 recruiter of the year by rivals. He understands what it's like to recruit at Texas, Arkansas, SMU, 
you know, he's had kids recruited, you know, at Gilmer, he, he gets it. Right. And so, I mean, I th- think I sent you guys a text, just something as simple as like the little tweets that go out that say, Hey, coach Golan is going to be in the DFW area today. Text tech doesn't do that. And, 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 you know, it makes us sound like a hater if we get on here or we post that, but it's always a simple question. Why not us? Why not tech? Right. And you know, the coaches are out there doing something. You, you hope that they are right. You hope they're going to games and taking advantage of the open contact period. But why is it okay that a, a UTSA or an SMU can do that, but this big, bad, big 12 program can't do that. And that's where I hope the search committee and the overall, you know, plan that goes into it. I hope they can understand that, you know, maybe they've got to shed whatever preconceptions that they had about what it takes from a money standpoint or what it takes from a staff standpoint. Um, because we talk about it all the time, Ben. I mean, the recruiting staff really didn't go from one to three people until two years ago, right? So that's, I mean, that's a yikes when you think about the year 2021, we're almost to 2022. Yeah. First of all, that was a lot. Um, Sorry. I, I, <laughs> no, that's good. why we should have an agenda. I, My bad. I think, I think your overall point is, is I think both of us, we, we cover this day to day. I think we're both kind of ready for Texas tech to be aggressive in recruiting as opposed to reactive or, you know, you, you gotta, and we always see this with different, you know, you can point out to individual prospects or whatever, but it, it's about, you know, developing those relationships with different coaches and trainers and being there and, and not limiting yourself to, we look at the numbers and tech's always at the bottom of the big 12 and offers. And, and, you know, once, uh, once so-and-so defensive line commits to an out-of-state program, that's it. There are no more targets. And then you go find a random Juco in Kansas. Like that's just not how Baylor and TCU and Oklahoma state operate. It's just not. And those are the schools you need to compete with. And so, you know, maybe start doing some of what they're doing and start, you know, going after the same caliber prospect and offering the same amount of prospects and all these different things that all go into the whole recruiting plan. Another thing you mentioned earlier, you were talking about Max Olson and all the national media types who agreed, you know, except for Joel Klatt, who was pretty angry that that Tech made a change here because, you know, at five and three, um, but you know, clearly Joel Klatt hasn't seen any games, the last, any tech games, the last two and a half years is he's, a, he's a hypocrite. Opinion. He said LSU made the right move, getting rid of or, uh, or Geron and doing what they did. And, uh, yeah. basically, you know, basically he's saying, Oh, who are you, you know, little tech. And, you know, I even commented that on that on Twitter. I said, Hey, you're Colorado is going to fire their coach like this year, next year. So, you know, yeah. stop the act. Um, yeah, no, I don't know. I, and I apologize. I was trying to trying to stick the landing there and probably said too much. I mean, the bottom line is uh, I was trying to convey the importance of this hire bin. I mean, it, yes. it, it has to work. It, it just does. Right. Um, you're already, you know, the reality is you're going to be in the big 12 conference, but that big 12 conference no longer includes Oklahoma or Texas, right? You're introducing UCF, Cincinnati, BYU, and then look at your background, Houston, right? And, you know, you look back, I mean, this, we're talking weeks ago, Ben, where, you know, the team comes back in the second half um, and then you're, you're happy, you're excited about that. We're talking about one and oh, and how this is, this is where you need to be. And then, you know, what happened at home against SFA. And so, you know, that's, I don't care about Joe Clad. I mean, I, I do actually like Joe Clad. He let me interview him at Big 12 Media Days one day, one year. He's super cool. I don't know. You know, it's, it's got to be tough throwing those opinions around every day. He's probably just hanging out with Colin Cowherd too much. I'll forgive him on that one. Um, but where I was going with that is, is that, you know, you're going to hear a lot of different things. I would say the the one thing that a national media member sees, it's easy for them to do less research when they see five and three and let that be their first opinion. But then if you were to dig into five and three and see two blowout losses to really teams that aren't like that great, right? And then if you were to dig in like, whoa, what happened here against SFA? You know, so at home, um, and then you look to the past year in HBCU. I mean, if somebody really took a look into that, I think that's probably what's most frustrating about it. And we don't need to get into the, you know, different numbers and certain games. I think 
I think if you and I are being honest with each other, with each other a lot of tech fans had no idea who Matt Wells was. I mean, it would be different if you knew who you were getting, at least from a regional type standpoint. Because think about what we're talking about right now. Like, even the person that doesn't know Jeff Trailer probably doesn't have to talk to too many more people to understand who Jeff Trailer is. When you hire the coach from Utah State, whether it works, whether it doesn't, whether it's good hire, bad hire, et cetera, I mean, it's really hard to relate to that. And so I don't know if he ever had a fair shot you know, coming in as that new guy, especially replacing Cliff, being the third head coach, you know, since, since Leach and things, you know, he didn't take over a great program. So, you know, again, I, I wish the best to, to Wells and, you know, the remaining staff members, I guess we'll get to that, but, you know, we saw last time we talked about, if we were to talk about this, the, the last time this coaching thing, how, Oh, we think so-and-so has a great chance to stay and blah, blah, blah. None of them stayed. Right. So again, I don't think there's a lot of, you know, importance in that, but Ben, I would say everybody's saying trailer, everybody's saying dykes. If, if you do it this early, you know, everyone's talking about, we talked about early signing period because we think about recruiting. A lot of people are like, oh, well, that means that they have their target or they wanted to get out ahead of the game. You mentioned earlier, LSU, USC, they're swimming in different, uh, or they're fishing in different ponds. Um, you know, everything certainly has a domino effect. Don't get me wrong. Um, because whoever takes those jobs, you know, those are, that's going to leave openings. Um, but Washington state, I don't think that, that they're talking to the same folks. In in fact, some of the folks that are really reporting the hardest on trailer to tech say that trailer already told Washington state, thanks for the interest, but no thanks. So that's out there, um, on the interwebs. Uh, I'm not going to pretend to have those sources, but I have seen that. Um, and, and then you think of Dykes and the feedback that I'd gotten from a lot of those coaches were, you know, man, he's got something really going at SMU and there's less pressure donors willing to, to put money into the program, improve facilities, all-star recruiters, yada, yada, yada. To me, I just think money talks, right? If they're willing to match the big conference money or whatever a tech could do in that situation, right? That's great. What, I, what I'm what i sort of doubtful for, Ben, and then I'll pass it back to you, is I think with the trailer hire, you get all the things you want, right? The high school connections, the head coaching experience, the the momentum, right? And you get a guy who can who's truly been part of a staff and understands how to build one out. Um, and apparently, based on all reporting, the the cash to go make it happen right with dykes i think i think he's a tremendous recruiter always has been right um but i also think a lot of those guys that are on his staff i think they like it in dallas right and specifically some of the best recruiters and then you look at one of his actual best recruiters trey haverty trey haverty's already coached at tech right trey haverty probably loves texas tech but i mean is is trey haverty ready to take the next step is he ready to just come back to the big 12, you know, I'm just, I'm nitpicking there, but I'm just throwing out examples. So if we look at those top two, right. And then maybe we can get into some, some others here in a bit. I don't know. I I think, I think personally, it's easier. It's easier. Like when you post on the website, okay, here's, here's your head coach. Here's your OC. Here's your DC. That's easy, but you got to fill out a whole staff. And I just don't think it's a guarantee that all those guys leave Dallas. Um, And we kind of saw what happened when you bring your whole staff. Right. I mean, even even some of the guys that came from his staff, once wow. they were on the market, the, the one guy I didn't ever remember his name. He left for Oregon like two days later. Um, and we've yeah, seen Javon, like Javon Bonite. Yeah, there you go. So anyway, I don't know. What are your thoughts on that, Ben? Yeah. Uh, sorry about my dogs. Now they're barking. Yeah, I'm sure you hear them. Um, no, yeah, it's such it's such a big piece. It's not just the head coach. It's the coordinators. It's the whole staff, as you mentioned. I think for me maybe the coordinators more than anything else. Cause I'm such a big like scheme guy. I don't know who trailer would bring over. I think Dykes has shown, um, you know, the last several years, he, he would kind of bring that spread, um, you know, almost similar to what Sonny Cumbie runs right now, kind of air raid right now. He has Lincoln Riley's younger brothers as offensive coordinator, um, Garrett Riley. So yeah, I mean, would he join him? Uh, possibly. Um, I think, I mean, you covered it all with those two. Do you want to get into the other potential candidates? Yeah, I think, well, I think what we probably need to do, right, instead of we're live on the mic, I think the, the idea here is we'll post more about those staffs just so, yeah. that, you know, we can post some general information and then we can get into it. 
I mean, you know, above and beyond those two, right? I think you've touched on it. Uh, obviously, there's the uh, there's the the bird in the hand, right? Come be the 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 favorite son comes home, right? The same narrative as Cliff, um, but if he can somehow rally the troops and show some promise here, does he get a shot at the the head job? That's the obvious. Um, Graham Harrell's name's been thrown out there. Um, you know, USC is already is already in shambles. They're going to be hiring a new head coach. You know, I, I highly doubt that he's going to be retained. It usually doesn't work that way, but maybe they maybe they invest in him for the future. We'll see. Um, I don't see that as a head coaching opportunity per se. That would surprise me. Uh, but coming back and and being the OC here, you know, not out of the question. Um, and then the other names that that we've seen, um, I guess loosely affiliated, have been Kendall Browse, the offensive coordinator at Arkansas, and then Jeff Lebby at Ole Miss. And all of these guys, I'd like to say, you know, when we compare them to a Dykes or a trailer, I mean, Dykes and trailer are 50 plus years old, right? They've been there. They've done that. They've been in coaching for 30 years. These guys that were mentioning 30 years ago, they were seven or eight years old, right? And so I think that's uh, just, I don't think that's a negative, right? But for me, it would, if I were on this search committee, it would be hard to differentiate a 37-year-old Jeff Levy from a 36, 37-year-old Kendall Bryles, from a 36-year-old Graham Harrell, right? You know, so on and so forth. I think Cumbie's a few years older, right? But but we're still talking about, you know, decades of experience compared to compared to some of the younger guys, right? And so that's sort of the lay of the land. I don't know if I left anyone off, Ben, and there's always got to be candidates that we're not thinking about as well. Yeah, I you know, I just think the early word is that head coaching experience is going to matter so much that, you know, it's not a secret. I've posted about Jeff Levy before. I just don't think it's going to happen just because he's, you know, would be a first time head coach. Same right. thing with Joey McGuire at Baylor. Um, and then, I mean, the, the two guys, you know, Aaron posted his uh, his chatter That's today, right. Art Bryles and Mike Leach, um, both obviously divisive names and, and you know, a lot of good with a lot of bad potentially. Yeah. So, you know, who knows, but those are the, those are the two guys that get everyone talking, right? That's the, I mean, those are the proven commodities, right? Right. I mean, more so than even the others. And I mean, what's interesting to me, right. Is that um, it's, it's difficult, but our brows, the football coach, like, yeah, you know, oh, give me it, that. it would you know be the I mean? best, the best football hire without a question. Yeah. And I was surprised. I mean, I flat out asked the question very simply and, you know, I, four of them were like, and one very articulately, like said, Art Browse was the guy and talked about, you know, Bobby Knight and his image and this, that, and the other, and how he was able to sort of lay the foundation for what tech basketball became, blah, blah. And it's easy to get, you know, lost in that thought. I think at the end of the day, that's a decision for the, the tech admin to make. And, you know, we both agree, you know, wrong, right, indifferent, that comes with its own set of circumstances, right? Um, we talk about national media, we talk about local media, we talk about whatever, um, you know, but if I'm on the search committee and winning is at the top of my list, I want to at least have a conversation and I want to understand what that would look like. Now, the reason that name is also interesting is I mentioned Kendall Browse, his son. I mentioned Jeff Levy, his son-in-law. You know, if those become realities and those become those guys become a figurehead and you still bring them in in some capacity, that's going to be talked about. Um, and, you know, the interesting thing is I know, I know that the team posted about that, but then like a day before we're hearing about, you know, the, the, the group that's behind Art Riles, who is willing to invest and, you know, be a, you know, be a backer for, for any, you know, university that would support that. And so, I mean, just expect anything and everything in a coaching search. Uh, but with Mike Leach, I mean, look, I went to school during the Mike Leach rise and I wore, I think like pirate hats and crab tree hats and stuff. I mean, I'm not going to get on here and lie that that wouldn't be cool. But what I will say is I'm an old man now. I've been doing this at rivals nearly eight, seven, eight years now. Um, and I've been through, as I've said a billion times on this podcast. Now I've been through these coaching searches and you know, whose name always comes up in Mike Leach. Yeah. And I mean, at first it was like these, you know, uh, uh, secretive texts and phone conversations. Oh, this is what I heard today at lunch and 
blah, blah, blah. And, you know, doing what we do, we're just trying to, you know, not necessarily break a story, but we're trying to find out as much as we can during these things. Um, and so I've, I've, been, I've heard this before, right? And I don't know what he's making at Mississippi State, um, but I know he's only been there, what, two years? Um, so any, any sort of assertion that he wants out of the SEC or this, that, or the other, I mean, that's fine. Um, but to me, when you look at the total landscape of everything, I think it would excite a lot of people, but still, if you talk about unifying the fan base, there's still going to be some people that, you know, that was so contentious for so long that, that I don't know, I don't see it. Um, but what I do, what I do see is like us getting, to me, that gets like tech fans lost in the sauce a little bit of talking about all this because like Texas tech football is the focus, right? You know, Womble just, you know, uh, donated $40 million. They're going to have a, probably a, just like that basketball facility, they're going to have a breathtaking new football facility, right? The, the stadium's constantly up, updated. They're in the big 12 conference. If, Jeff Trailer has nothing to do with Texas Tech, right? Any of those things that are nostalgia, whether it be a Bryles or a Leach type of conversation or any sort of connection, you know, that you can make to other coaches like a Lebby or a Kendall. I, I still think, you know, that that machine is there. That entity is there. And if you give it to somebody like a trailer, if you don't get trailer, or you don't get Dykes again. Of course, I'm a McGuire fan. I know he didn't check those boxes that we've mentioned, but give them an opportunity to build something, you know, over a three to four year period. And I truly think with the conference changes, I wrote about it months ago. Look, you may not like it, but when the dust settles, you'll have a better chance of being in the conference championship, building a winner every year, you know, and being competitive year over year, getting to bowl games, winning eight, nine games. You know, you, you might think of this as, you know, a bad thing for now, but long-term, right? I think they have a chance to get this higher right and, and build a, a winning tradition moving forward. And I truly think, you know, if you had that, if you ask me, I'm going with Trailer. if he's available, if they would hire McGuire, I believe in it. Um, I don't know Dykes that well. I know that if he can have the recruiting department and if he can do what he's done, you know, at SMU at Texas Tech, then, then I would be willing to, to see it play out. But that really depends on that staff, Ben. Yeah, you know, that's well said. I think I'm, I'm with you on the same, you know, idea for, for the candidates. But, you know, as you mentioned earlier, it's going to be a long search. And all right now, it seems so frantic because it's the first week and information is flying in and everyone's, you know, checking the board 24-7. But you know, we have a, a long four or five weeks ahead of us and we don't know what way, you know, it's going to go. So um, it, it's exciting, um, it, you know, kind of makes me anxious because I want answers. Right. But, you know, we'll, yeah. we'll see, man. There, there's a lot of ways and, you know, that, that this could go. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm with you with, with with the names that you mentioned. Well, apparently, you know, since you brought up the same report, you know, we can say on here since it's been reported uh, pretty widely, you know, it's been reported that Tech met with Trailer Today uh, in San Antonio um, and they were in Dallas for an alumni event. It's not clear if they met with Dykes or if they'd just done that over the phone. In my experience, a lot of this starts over the phone um, and they can turn into like a lunch or a meetup, but UTSA is on a bye week. Um, and I think, you know, look, Everybody from the outside, it's easy to say, oh, you know, they're talking to him during the season or they're doing whatever. Like, look, they have a job to get done and trailer has an opportunity to make, you know, 200 or excuse me, 200, two plus more million dollars per year um, than he's making now. And, and I know that UTSA could step up, but I just don't think they could do that. And unless he's, you know, the most loyal guy that, that I've ever heard of, um, he's either one or two things, right? Um, negotiating with tech or waiting to see what else comes open because you did mention those other jobs. And I mentioned that domino effect. I don't think that Dave Aranda is a first choice at LSU, but it would never surprise me if, if someone, you know, made that leap. And if that happens and Baylor opens, then obviously that's a wrench. And there's a lot of rumors about Patterson and TCU. You know, I'll believe it when I see it. Um, typically these things, you know, take a while. Um, but man, you know, now I live in Dallas. I got a lot of TCU folks in my ear about uh, Patterson. And so pretty interesting to me nonetheless. And, and I, again, those things could change, but to me, I look at that as a good thing. You know, you got it done early. 
Um, it's something, Ben, I think we could talk about it now if the guys haven't already mentioned. We, me and Ben, I'll write all our stories. And on the back end of the website, there's like an admin where we load pictures and write our stories, put it together. We can save it, come back and edit it, right? I can write something tonight, edit it in the morning, et cetera. We have had Wells fired stories in there for a year because he was going to be fired. Like I remember it like it was yesterday. He was going to be fired. We were going to post everything on a Sunday evening. It was all ready to go. We all stopped what we were doing that weekend to write it. Um, and so that's just been sitting there in the admin. We never deleted it because we thought, okay, well, why would we delete it? We can save it right here. Just change some stuff. And I don't know if we did that or not, but it, it always cracked me up because I'll go in there to write a story and it would be there. So that all that story to maybe kind of laugh at ourselves, but also, you know, what, what, what should have been done last year, you know, was done halfway through the season and, and we can debate what's fair or what's the right timing, but in college football these days, you don't have a lot of time to get it right. So if the donors are there and they're supporting the program and they want to go in a different direction, it's time to go. Um, it's been too long that, that Texas tech football, you know, and again, we talked about Max Olson, Max Olson we talked about national, like what's the expectation at tech? Well, look, you know, it's, I thought, I mean, again, I know sometimes Kirby doesn't have the best press conferences, but man, he was fired up. Right. And he was like, it, you know, yeah, I said a lead and yeah, I did it. And yeah, blah, blah, blah. He's like, but if we stop trying, if that's not our goal, you know, that's when we're in trouble. Right. So you can be the biggest Kirby hater you want, um, but they're taking some action um, and they're trying to make it better. I don't think the expectation by anyone in Lubbock, my friends included, is to win nine, 10 games and win the conference every year. I, I don't know about your friends, but geez, I mean, I mentioned I went to school in Leach era. Shit, you went to the what Tuberville era? I mean, Cliff, Cliff, yeah. yeah. So, so I mean, again, like I think the expectation you win seven or eight games, you're gonna have a lot of happy people. You win a bowl game, you're gonna have even more happy people. You build on that success, and and they'll build a statue of you. You kidding me? I mean, yeah. I, well, I mean, Tech hasn't won a bowl game since 2013, since that Holiday Bowl. It's that's like. What is the expectation? I mean, come on, are you serious? But yeah, I mean, you mentioned it's UTSA's bye week. A lot of people were mad that Tech supposedly went down there today and talked to him. Um, people in my Twitter mentions are mad about that. So, you know, I, I don't know. But um, again, just business. Shit. <laughs> We have a long search ahead of us. I'm sure we'll do plenty more of these, and, you know, talk about the latest. But um, did, did you have anything else? uh no just who's your who's your favorite and why who is my favorite if i'm yeah. like I, I mean i i would i would take joey mcguire but again he doesn't have the head coaching experience so uh jeff trailer i could be sold on that i just want to see who his coordinators would be because i'm not i don't know too much about them yet i guess the guys currently at utsa if he's going to bring them all over i just haven't studied them enough but i like what i hear about trailer you know, as a head coach, as a recruiter, as a leader, all those things like that sounds good to me. Okay. Well, guys, like Ben said, we'll get back at this next week. We'll probably have a whole complete set of updates and, and information. We have, you know, just to touch on it, we have reached out to every single commit, a lot of no comments, uh, which is very fair. And me personally, there's only nine of them, three, which are very brand new. And I just don't want to badger them. I think I'm going to give them some time to, to process that. And they'll reach out, right? They've talked to us. We've written stories. We've been to their high schools. You know, they know the drill. Um, but we'll uh, we'll keep on that. And, you know, again, there's still nine. Nobody's uh, jumped ship just yet. And, you know, whoever the new coach is can come in and, and try to build a quick relationship. But for Ben Golan, I'm Matt Clare. That is the Lubbock or Leave It podcast brought to you, as always, by Carnley Properties. Please check out their info below the player. And Ben, have a good night.